In today's video, we're going to talk all about the treatment for vaginismus. So vaginismus is a really common condition that we see in the clinic, and it's actually one of my favorite conditions to treat. So what is vaginismus? It is essentially involuntary contractions of the vaginal muscles whenever there is penetration or even the threat of penetration or the thought of penetration. Um, it can cause those vaginal muscles to contract and make penetration essentially impossible. So this can be, um, you know, whether it's like sexual intercourse, um, using a tampon, a gynecology exam, all these things can be nearly impossible if you have vaginismus. So who gets vaginismus? We're going to talk about two different kinds. So the first kind is called primary vaginismus. And this is someone who has had vaginismus lifelong. So they noticed it at first whenever they um, tried to use a tampon when they got their period. And they weren't able to insert that tampon. Sometimes they may describe that they feel like they're hitting a brick wall or that there's just no movement. That would be somebody who um, may seek treatment in younger years, so you know, a, a woman in her late teens, early 20s, who needs to have um, a pap smear at the gynecology office, but is unable to because she cannot tolerate a pelvic exam or a um, speculum exam. So the next type of vaginismus that we'll talk about is called secondary vaginismus, and that's sometimes known as acquired vaginismus. So this is the person who can previously have pain-free penetration, but at some point along the line, they stopped being able to. So clinically, what I see this in is someone who um, had a very bad UTI or a yeast infection or some type of painful trauma to that area. It can even have to happen after some something like a car accident or a fall on their buttocks, a broken tailbone, after childbirth, there's so many reasons why an acquired vaginismus can occur. Um, that's probably what I see more of in the clinic, but you know, it really could be 50-50. I feel like um, in my experience, the younger population are the ones who come in for primary vaginismus and someone who's in their 30s, 40s, has have previously had no issues are ones that are coming in for secondary or acquired vaginismus. Um, another just side note that I've noticed is if someone grows up in like a purity culture or where sex is considered really bad or it's a negative thing, um, that sometimes is correlated with vaginismus. I see that a lot, especially in primary vaginismus. Just to note, so what does a PT evaluation look like when someone is coming in with vaginismus? We always start our evaluations by taking history. We want to know anything, even if you don't think it's pertinent to your treatment. We want to know about childhood habits. Did you have any issues whenever you first started a period? Were you able to use tampons? Do you ever have pain if you sit for too long or if something rubs against your perineum or your vaginal area in the wrong way? Like um, wearing a pair of jeans where the seam goes right down the middle. We want to know all those factors. Were you able ever able to have pain-free insertion or penetration and now you can't? All those things are important when we're taking our history. The next what we'll do, just like any of our other exams, we always like to look at the way that um, our patients are moving. So do they breathe well? Do they hold a lot of tension in their pelvis? Are they walking around slightly flexed because they have a protective response in this pelvic area? Th those are all things that we look for. We sometimes even look to see um, if they breathe, you know, up in their chest all the time. That can give us a good indication that they're not fully relaxing through their pelvic floor. So those are just some things that we can kind of glean from the outside. And then if warranted, we will do an internal pelvic floor muscle examination. And sometimes this just starts with looking at the pelvic floor muscles from the outside and seeing what the tone is. Obviously this condition is gonna have painful or even impossible insertion. So a lot of times we don't do that internal exam on the very first visit. You can imagine we don't want to go straight to the most triggering thing um, when it comes to trying to walk with you on this healing journey from this condition. So after we get a good picture of what type of vaginismus you are dealing with and what some of your symptoms are, we can start to work on a treatment plan. So this is really whenever it gets exciting. So my go-to treatments for vaginismus include abdominal mobilization, pelvic floor relaxation techniques, breathing techniques, all the things that are going to help decrease the nervous system and make it more possible for relaxation in the pelvic area. 
The pelvis is one of the major places in the body where we hold trauma, and it can even be the first thing that tightens whenever you have a protective response. So whenever you see something scary or threatening, typically your pelvic floor is one of the first places to tighten. We work on trying to get that to relax, to move you towards your goal of pain-free intercourse or to have a pelvic exam or to do these things that you need to do for your health and your happiness in a pain-free manner. Typically, we see someone with vaginismus for several sessions in a row. We start weekly sessions and then we can slowly decrease to every other week or even monthly sessions. A home program may look like using vaginal dilators, self-stretching, and pelvic floor relaxation exercises. If you have vaginismus or this resonates with you, please reach out to your local pelvic floor physical therapist or leave a comment. Make sure to like and subscribe.